Welcome to European Startup Universe Talks. In this series, we will meet startup founders, entrepreneurs, investors and major stakeholders of the startup ecosystem. They will let us in on the challenges and the successes of their career, their view on the current state of the startup field and give vital advice for those in the beginning stages of their startup journey. If you're in the early stages of your startup and are looking for an opportunity to take it to the next level, join the six-week European Startup Universe initiative of your country. There you will get founding opportunities, meet with experienced experts and founders, and network with the startup community and much more. Let's make the EU the global powerhouse for startups. Welcome to European Startup Universe Talks. I'm Mauritza and I'm here with Juan. You are the country organizer for Spain and you have a long history, a long experience in the startup field. Welcome to today's episode. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks. And how are you? Fine, fine. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here today. I want us to just start off with maybe you could uh, tell me a bit more about what you do and uh, your experience in the startup field. Yes, I have worked with, with the startups uh, for many years, maybe, I don't know, uh, more than 15 years, something, something like that, in different fields, especially in technology. And now I'm working, working especially in the, for many years also in the big, big data field. Not only, not only with the startups, but, but now with, uh, with different companies and with different, with different projects. And now I'm in a, in a company also in, in the big data field. What was it that drew you towards this particular field? Well, uh, firstly, uh, I always loved the startups and technology. And especially the way startups uh, uh, the last years are, are uh, beginning to to make a um, big change in terms of of, of of employment or creativity and so on. And related to the big data, big data field, because I, I think data offers us a lot a lot of opportunities in, in many many different fields. The good thing about about the big data field is that can, you can apply the knowledge to um, mainly almost everything and, and mixing those things together i think uh, it, it has a lot of uh, possibilities in many in many ways so can you tell me a bit about how the startup ecosystem looks in spain well the startup ecosystem is is growing every year uh, since the the beginning of the beginning of the century especially and in the technology field um, we have uh, like uh, more or less about 12 unicorns, 12, 12 startups that are considered unicorns. And each, each year, uh, more startups are, are, are coming to this category of, of, of big companies or big uh, um, investments and so. And we have a, a very um, uh, developed ecosystems in different cities, especially in Madrid, Barcelona, and, and now, especially in, in Valencia also. But we have other, other parts of the country that are also uh, growing a lot, like the Basque country or Galicia or, or Andalusia and many other parts. What do you think is the reason that it has grown so much over the past years? Well, I think like in many different countries, uh, technology especially has, has uh, giving young people, especially, a lot of new opportunities to learn and to create things and so on. And there have been a lot of different uh, startup programs in Spain um, created from from different different entities or uh, governments and universities and so. On. And also, the the entrepreneurship education is growing each, each year in Spain. And with reference to, references to, to Silicon Valley and to, to other uh, parts of the world that are uh, improving. Uh, and also recent, recently, uh, there has been a, a great effort uh, from the government to, to facilitate things to the startups, making a new law uh, special only for startups and to, 
to let them, uh, let the people uh, who, the founders, uh, uh, achieve things more easily. No? Not, not always um, having to pay before um, uh, creating products or, or having to to pay if you are not achieve nothing. You, you didn't achieve nothing. And now I think um, the culture of, of the of the country is more focused on or more. Uh, centered in in the startup culture. Is this a new law, or how long has it been around? The law is is just um, a, re a very recent law that is, uh, is is close to be approved soon, and it offers a lot of opportunities of new opportunities for startups, but it is not yet uh, approved. Okay. Oh, I feel like if, when or if it gets approved, it will have a huge impact on the startup field in general in Spain. I hope so. Yes. Yes. But as for as for now, what are the biggest stakeholders in the country? There are many different start, startups that are growing because many of them uh, we have also the, the connection with Latin America, and I think this it is a big um, uh, opportunity to 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 the startups to grow. Spanish is now is the second language by number of speak, native speakers in, in the world. Only this, uh, uh, the, the first one is Chinese and the second one, second one is Spanish by native, native, native speakers. And there are a lot of different uh, administrations and universities and uh, also a lot of big companies that are investing a lot in, in startups that are very aware now, not not maybe like five or six years ago, but now I think that there are a lot of stakeholders that are, are improving the, the ecosystem. What do you think is the, the future of the ecosystem in Spain? What do you envision in like five or ten years? Well, um, the first thing I, I think is the there is no really an like a nation ecosystem. The ecosystems are, as I told you before, the ecosystems are in, in big cities like Barcelona or Madrid or Valencia. But we need to to connect every little opportunity or every little ecosystem inside Spain to to make possible that every startup uh, could achieve or could, could have the same opportunities in in the whole country. Now, uh, and this is one of the biggest challenges now. Um, the other one is always investment because uh, startups need, 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 they need funding. And it's, some, some, it's something that it's not always uh, easy for the startups. So this, these two things and always, uh, we have always to, to keep uh, giving uh, education for the startups to, to grow and so on, but these are the, the main challenges now. For the, uh, the ESU program from Spain, can you tell me a bit more of what that will contain of? One of the, the needs of Spain is to, to uh, foster the, the nation ecosystem and also to connect it to the rest of, of Europe. And that's why we are uh, very uh, passionate about the Euro European startup universe because I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities that are, are not yet discovered, not only by Spain, but um, and the rest of the countries of Europe. Uh, because um, we know we, we are in a, in a common market and so on, and, but I think we don't leverage enough the, that, that situation. I think each country lives like apart from the others. And we have not connected enough each country one to the other. And I think there are a lot, a lot of opportunities waiting to be in, for being discovered in, in that way. So the, the program will be an opportunity for the startup ecosystem to expand from nation to nation to be more well connected. Yes, firstly, to, to connect uh, the startups inside Spain, but with an European mindset, with the, the mindset of, of, 
of being aware that we have a lot of opportunities there. And also, as I told you before, with late Latin America, because Spain is like the bridge between Latin America and Europe. And I think if we mix those those different ecosystems or, or, or those different worlds, worlds, we can achieve a lot of, of uh, new things and, and we, have, we can create a lot of uh, new things that will also be uh, sur uh, surprising for us in, in a good way. Absolutely. What, uh, and somebody who is looking to be part of the program, what they, can they expect to, to see or take part of? Well, firstly, uh, the ability uh, to connect to, to, to others and the, the possibility to connect to, to other startups inside Spain and also uh, in Latin America and Europe. And they connect with funders from different backgrounds. They connect with ex experts that are um, also passionate to help startups. Uh, the possibility of contacting different business angels and investors. Uh, many, 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 many things, many positive things. What would you say as a person who is just getting started on their startup journey? What, what is it that you really need in order to like get going and then later on succeed? Well, well as you said, it is a journey. So you have to, you, you, you have to be aware that you can uh, find a lot of things in your journey. Some, some of them are not positive things, uh, but you have to learn. And, um, you have to learn about the, that uh, negative things that you can find. And you have to be able to change the way you are doing things because maybe because maybe you think you have the, um, and the perfect idea, but sometimes the ideas is, are something that are only in our minds. In the real world, the ideas doesn't, doesn't, uh, they, they, they doesn't exist, they don't exist. So I think they must be prepared to, to pivot as fast as they can, to learn from the market, uh, to don't, don't be afraid to, to fail uh, at the first time because uh, there's a famous quote, as, as you know, that fail is, is the acronym for uh, uh, first att attempt in learning. So failing is, is learning, is something positive. And I think if, if, they, are, if they are passionate and they, they can be resilient and, and learn from every failure, they, uh, they, I'm sure that at last they will be successful. So you, you talked a bit about the idea just being in your head is not the same as when you try it out in reality. If, what would you say, are there any hints to know whether your idea is good or bad? Well, the only way is to test it. The only way is to uh, create something, create a product that has connection with the real world and to see if, if you are right or not. It's very, very, very difficult that in, at the first time you your idea has success because uh, as I told you before, an idea is something that only exists, exists in our mind. So, uh, and also nobody is going to buy you your idea. It has to become real that um, in order to someone to buy it. So the only way is to test it, to know your customers, to know your clients, to know what they want and to see if that thing you, you convert from one idea to, to the real world is right or not is the only way. <laughs> Do you have any tips on how to test out the, the idea in, uh, in real life? Well, the, the, the easiest way uh, is to, to ask your, your customers, to ask, to, to ask people about your idea. Uh, is the easiest way, but, but I think you have always to to make something tangible uh, because uh, asking only is, is not enough. You have to to realize something, to make something material or something that is uh, feasible uh, to prove if, if it is good or if it will work or not. Is the only way. Hmm. Did you see? Any mistakes that other startup funders do often that you feel like we want everyone to know that to avoid? Well, um, sometimes um, when when they insist too, too much in something that is not working, 
uh, of course, if they, if they are very sure, if they are very confident, it's okay, but you have to be careful uh, in order not to uh, to be always the same. If you, 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 if you feel that something is not working, you have to be able to, to change it. You, like, like we always say, don't fall, in, don't fall in love with your idea. Be able to change it. And I, I, I understand that a lot of people, a lot, a lot of founders want to keep the, the essence of the idea and that is good because they, maybe, especially if they are, for, for instance, social entrepreneurs or something like that, they want to keep the essence and that is good. But maybe they have to change the way, the way uh, they are doing things. So you have to be very flexible and observant of when it's not really working. Yes, and you have to be able also to learn learn how to connect the dots because maybe you have clues around you that you don't perceive or you don't uh, understand, and you have to be very uh, open-minded and very uh, eye-opened also to perceive new opportunities. And maybe because the, uh, sometimes sometimes the thing more important in, is the, is not what you know, uh, uh, but what you don't know, and you have to be able to, to discover that thing you, you don't know. It's not easy, but you have to to be uh, awake to see it. Yeah, absolutely, and I feel like it's so vital to be, as you're saying, to to make sure that uh, you're really staying observant and really when something isn't working you have to just accept accept the yes fact. and maybe maybe you thought maybe that something something you thought that wasn't important is the key to to have a solution so don't don't think that something is not uh, uh, good enough or don't think that something is very simple to apply it because every little thing can be a change maker mm. in, in your project so uh -huh. the artist, the, I think the, the key sometimes is to um, uh, know how to connect different opportunities and different dots and to bring something new, mixing different different ways of doing things. Have you seen, have you an example in uh, either in your own experience or in startups that you've seen that when they have really managed to observe that something isn't working and then stir it in the right direction? Well, I think there are many, many examples of, of that kind. Even in big and very big companies, I don't know. Um, maybe one example, classical example is uh, Airbnb. They started uh, like um, um, renting, renting rooms and, and so on, and, and making different photographs of the, of the rooms, and now. Uh, one of the keys was um, uh, having a very, very good photographs, very, very good photographers that worked for, for them. So it's not, it was only not the room, but the way you, you, you express and you transmit and you communicate what, what you do in this case. Of course, there are many, there were in this case of Airbnb, many other things that were important, but in this case, it's always said that uh, having good photographers was one of the of the keys to 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 make grow the the business and i don't know i think in in a lot of different examples you can find uh, little things that um, were change makers in the in, in the startup to, to and that make make them grow yeah such a little little difference that makes yes. huge make the difference a little difference could make the difference yeah, yeah definitely mm. yes yeah, the difference the difficult thing is to find to find out which thing is the is the change maker that the difficult thing is not uh, of course not every startup discovery discovery yeah. i can imagine it's very difficult do you when you are uh, giving advice or being a mentor to, to other startups, what are your go-to sort of uh, process or your go-to advice that you give? Of course, I, I am a very big fan of the Lean Startup method, methodology that always focus on the, on the customer. 
So you have to focus on the, on the customer. Uh, you have to, to, to achieve uh, what is called the product market fit. You have to align the, 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 your value proposition of your, of your startup or your product to the, uh, the, the thing your customer needs or wants. That's the key always. That's the, that's the first, first stone where to start. Mm. And, and after that, of course, there are many, many details that you, you have to be careful about. But the first step is always that. What, what are the, the other details that you have to be observant about? Well, as I told you now, the first one is to, to, to know the customer, to know uh, his or her pains and so on. But you have to apply this philosophy in every, everything you do in the, in the, in the startup. Uh, from the way you, you communicate, uh, from, uh, to the way you to talk to your, to your customers, to the way you um, design in, in a graphic way in your product, many, many different things. Every detail counts, of course. Then always the, 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 the more important one is to, to fit the customer with your with your proposal. Do you have a favorite example either in your own career or other startups that you have monitored that uh, is a, just the perfect example of how things should uh, should go about? Well, I have uh, the the thing I I value more is that the startups that succeed they don't succeed at, at, at the first time. They have to learn a lot of things. They have to pivot, and I always, I am always very happy when I see startups that I have worked with that they make different pivoting, different different pivots, and they uh, at last succeed. But, but because that is the only way. Uh, for instance, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I remember one startup that was was starting. Uh, 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 offering uh, services with, with robots uh, and with education for children and so on. And that didn't work it quite well. And they changed it and they pivot and they, they changed uh, to, to apply the, the work of the robots to, to indus industries, for instance. So you never know, you, can, you have to change in different components of your project to make it uh, successful. You have to 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 stay, test everything, change the customer, change the, the tools you are you are using, or change maybe also the the business model. Of course, you have you can change a lot of things just to test and to see what is the one the best the, the best one. So you you have to fail in order to to succeed. Yes, yes, you have to fail. But uh, I like to say that fail is that is, is the acronym of. Uh, First, at, uh, first attempt in, in learning. It's always the first attempt in learning. You have to learn. Because you're in a startup, you are looking for a new business model. You have to find it and you, you know uh, almost nothing. Your idea is the, your starting point, but you have to be aware that it's only the starting point. You, you can finish in many, uh, any other part of your of, of the of the world or of any 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 other part of re, of the business that you you weren't aware of, and also um, uh, you don't you don't have to be afraid to fail because it's, it's, it's the only only way to learn. Is that an advice that you often give to uh, to people talking to you about when things are not working really for them? Yes, because sometimes when the, the startups um, have a lot of passion on, about what they do, and if it doesn't work, they they get disappointed. That um, my but I think they they must uh, focus it like a, with a reframing and frame it like uh, uh, that is some way only a thing that they have learned that they, that they didn't know. There is no failure. There is only a. I think that you have uh, realized that you have to do, and you you are, you you now not a, another uh, new thing that you didn't know, and you know what what thing uh, you don't have to do, and try another another one. 
Is there a particular within the startup field, a branch within it that is your particularly favorite one? Well, I think if I had to choose, because you know, um, uh, you can study a lot of things in technology, you can have a lot of experience, but if I had to choose something, only one thing, is not the, the knowledge you have, it's not the studies you have, it's not the experience. I, I think for me, the more important thing is creativity, the, the, the spirit of, of, of being creative, of like I said before, the spirit of uh, the aim to, to connect the dots or do everything that surrounds you, the creative and to make creative things with, with that. Because with that thing, without that thing, yes, you, you, you could be successful only with if you are a very, a very good at technology or if you have a lot of experience. But if you have creativity, it is the, the key for, for many, many, many things. Okay, well, that's very yeah, creativity, And creativity uh, is especially an attitude I, for me. It's an attitude, the attitude of being creative. It's, it's not something, of course, maybe there are people that are, is more creative by nature than, than others, but it's something also that you, you can cultivate it, that you can uh, pot potentiate in, your, in yourself. An attitude that you, that you, that you, can, you can fit and, and to make it uh, bigger each day. So it's a sort of a skill to, uh, to develop over time. Yes, it's a skill. It's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a custom also, it's something that, that you have to be used to, to be uh, every day of, of, of your life being able to, to, to be creative and to, to be creative when, with, the, with um, the little or uh, resources you have, and no matter if you have a lot of resources or, or many resources, with the resources you have, you, ha you have to learn to be creative with that. So if you don't have a lot of resources, you can anyways have uh, faith and hope and still get going. It's not just limited to... Yes, I, I, at least you, you have to have that. Uh, sometimes it's difficult, but I think it's, it's a, I think that, uh, that every, every founder needs. Yes, of course, technology and funding and so on, uh, it helps a lot also, also but... Creativity is the, is like the engine of the of the process. That's a very very nice uh, way to put it, and I feel like uh, can give a bit of hope because sometimes the focus is a lot of on the funding and uh, other things that are maybe sometimes out of your own control. Yes, and the funding. It depends, but because you have you can have a very good company without funding. Uh, in some cases, and in other cases, mm, you will you will need it. It depends, but uh, you have. I think you don't have to focus on, on on funding when you start. When you start, you have to to focus on on making uh, a product or and especially and, and in solving a problem that someone has, and and giving a very good solution. And after that, you will see if you need funding or not. Of course, of course, funding is always needed. But you can you cannot start thinking about funding. You can you have to start thinking about solving problems, of, about offering value to to someone. Maybe it is an, a a person or many per, many uh, persons or, or companies, or, but something that has, has value. Okay. So how do you uh, when you are looking for to get funding? How do you do? You have any tips on how to approach the the potential investors? Well, firstly, don't look for funding if you don't have customers. First, you have to have customers because it's the way to to prove that the way the thing you are doing is is something that someone wants. Uh, if you go to uh, to to an investor and to ask for funding, but only with one idea and with no customers, there's it will be very, very difficult that someone invest, uh, invest on you. You have to have customers, you have to prove your, that your idea, that your startup, that your project uh, worth it. And it, that is the only way that to make it, make it real, make it 
um, uh, something that people want. Mm. And, uh, and you can convince an investor uh, to scale your startup uh, starting at this point only. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's very good, uh, good advice to just having to be, having a more grounds to stand on, so to speak, before really thinking that you can uh, yeah. approach the investors. And also, there's a very famous quote by Paul Graham, then the founder of Y Combinator, that says, uh, do things that don't scale. So when you begin, don't be obsessed, don't be worried uh, about scaling or about funding. Do things that, that, do things that don't scale, uh, it means that you have to, uh, to be in the real world, to, to treat with a, a little amount of customers, maybe, because it's the way that you're going to learn the, the, the most. That's a very nice way to uh, to wrap it all up. But before we, we do that, is there anything you would like to add? Well, no, I, I, there's um, a lot of quotes that I, I, I like quotes because it's a way also to focus yourself and to, to, to have a different mindset uh, uh, in order to, to create something. And there's, a, there's another quote from Steve Blank, one, one of the creators of of the Lean Startup Methodology that says um, uh, execution uh, pays your salary, but innovation pays your, your pension. So I think it's a very good mindset to be uh, passionate about innovation, about giving first, about uh, creating value, and not only ex executing something, always trying to to give a value to, to the customers and, the, uh, and to the people that you you want to to serve that's great yeah thank you thank you very much for for talking to me today and thank you so much for giving all the insight and the advice and uh, the good quotes you're welcome thank you to you to join the six week program register on the website until the 28th of february go to the startupuniverse.org make sure to follow us on social media on instagram facebook twitter linkedin and on tiktok Please like and subscribe in order to get notified for our next episode on YouTube or on the podcast platforms. Thank you for listening.